The Switch Axe is new to this generation of Monster Hunter. It is split between two forms, the Axe Mode and the Sword Mode. While in Axe Mode you can run, similar to how it works with Longsword and Hammer, while in the Sword Mode you are restricted to walking, similar to Greatsword. The Switch Axe is inherently more complex due to having two different modes of operation, but you'll come to understand it quickly enough if you just use it for a while. If it seems really confusing now, just stick with it. It'll make sense eventually, and you may find that you have a new favorite weapon. Switch Axe can sidestep out of all of its attacks. This is more useful than you may think. While Sword Mode is slower and clunkier, it deals more damage and activates the file effects. This lets you take advantage of openings more effectively and inflict status ailments. You are also more mobile than you may think while in sword mode, and going into and out of axe mode's forward stab can help you get around without needing to sheath first. There are switch axes with all elements and status ailments except for sleep. You can also build up exhaustion with exhaust files, which can also deal a very small amount of KO damage when hitting a monster's head. All attacks will deal cutting damage. Attacks while in sword mode have additional and or enhanced effects depending on the file type. Power files add 20% raw damage, whereas elemental files add 25% to elemental or status damage. Every other file adds a value that is specific to that switch axe. You'll have to look up the information for that. Fortunately for you, I've compiled all of the switch axes and other weapons into a spreadsheet. You can find a link in the description. There's a big explosion attack, which is very cool and fun. It does cutting damage, but does not affect tail cutting. Additionally, after attacking, you have a long period of time where you are able to evade. This is more useful than you might think. Switch Axe pairs well with evasion skills because of this, if that interests you. The Sword Gauge is in the top left during a hunt, and starts at 50% when the quest starts. It gains 5% every 5 seconds when you're not in sword mode. The reload message will display when the gauge is below 42%. Reloading will add 40% to the gauge. Switch axe can feel very complicated at first, but I encourage you to keep using it until you get the hang of things. Try just using the axe at first, and then mixing in the sword later on. That being said, I also encourage you to experiment. If switch axe is just too confusing and clunky, pick a different weapon. There are 12 weapon classes to choose from, 9 melee and 3 ranged. Try them all. I won't be going into many advanced mechanics or calculations in this video, this will be more of a beginner and maybe some intermediate knowledge. To really excel with this weapon, you'll want to know when to use axe mode and when to use sword mode. That will come with experience and will vary from monster to monster. At a certain point, it will pay to understand how files affect your weapon and look up more specifics, but that's only relevant later on. Just know that power files will add 20% to your raw damage and you should prioritize that for the time being. The weapon and armor I'll be using can all be bought from the equipment shop next to the smithy, across from the item shop. Let's go over the attacks first and I'll talk more about them afterwards during a great Jackie hunt. Motion values or MV will be displayed up here and is the strength of the attack. Higher MVs means more damage. Press triangle to unsheathe your weapon. Press square while the weapon is unsheathed to sheathe. Press R plus triangle plus circle to unsheathe into a sword attack, or you will reload if your gauge isn't high enough. Be careful. Treat reloading like using an item, as it takes a similar length of time. Don't do it when it's not safe to do so. Press select while unsheathed in axe mode to do the upswing attack. This is an alternate way to perform this attack. This move is great for hitting tails and other parts that may be high up. Press select while unsheathed in sword mode due to the rising slash. I think this is the only way to do it without having to do another attack first. This has the same use as the axe one, but will potentially do more damage.
そうなるもの Make a habit of grabbing items from the supply box. Great Jaggy should start in Area 5. We can go to Area 7 from camp through this shortcut here, and from Area 7 to Area 5. If this is your first time hunting Great Jaggy, a cutscene will play. Now that we're in the hunt, make sure to paintball the monster. This will track it on your map. Try not to forget it. You may not lose Great Jaggy this time, but you'll thank yourself later for not having to search the whole map for them. You can use the forward slash as a sort of poke to get some damage in and evade right after. It works particularly well because it's an initiation move, and if you can follow up, you can go right into the sword mode. Don't be too afraid of being in sword mode. If you don't need a lot of mobility, walking and rolling around are just fine. Switch Axe is very good at hitting specific targets due to its strong vertical attacks. I missed it here, but don't forget about the Discharge Cancel Finisher. It moves you back a bit, and that can help push you to safety. For Great Jaggy in particular, they and their small minions can be troublesome when you want to use an item or reload. Flash Bombs can help a lot. If you can't find an opening with or without flash bombs, paintball Great Jaggy and consider leaving the area to heal, sharpen, reload, etc. When you don't have enough sword gauge to take advantage of an opening, consider doing a wild swing instead of reloading. While using sword mode is ideal, if you reload, the opportunity to attack may pass. Here, I'm trying to look for an opening to sharpen, but with all these small monsters, it's not really practical. Fortunately, Great Jaggy takes a hint and leaves the area. What a pal. You should aim to make attacks on weak spots that won't put you in danger. Your timing and positioning have to be just right. The step slash is such an awesome tool, make sure you take advantage of it. A classic Monster Hunter technique is hitting the monster as it's turning and rolling away before it hits you. This won't work with all weapons or all attacks. For this quest, they give us tainted meat. If you ever see a monster drooling, they may eat meat that you drop. Tainted meat will build up paralysis. The first meat should paralyze the monster. If a monster is ever impaired, such as being paralyzed or in a trap, it's a good opportunity for the elemental discharge. And there we go. Don't forget about that overhead slash in axe mode. It hits pretty hard.
Remember, the side slash and axe mode and horizontal cut and sword mode are great for clearing out small monsters. In axe mode, the forward slash into either sword mode or the overhead slash is a great combo for damage. The overhead and rising slash attacks in sword mode is an infinite combo that you can swing as long as you have the gauge for it. Likewise, the wild swing in axe mode is also infinite as long as you have stamina. It's a decent alternative. I recommend you hunt Great Jackie a few times and make his full armor set and upgrade your Switch Axe to the Bone Axe Plus. That will arguably be the best weapon in armor at this point in the game and will set you up for success. Take your time. Be patient with yourself. If you like how Switch Axe plays or looks but it's sluggish and you keep getting hit, just stick with it. You'll get the hang of it eventually. Until next time.